Hi and welcome to the channel Newtown Naughty Boy once again and in this video we will be looking at a Walther LP53 air pistol. The Walther LP53 was produced between 1953 and 1983. There is a serial number on the side of the gun and you can look up the approximate date from this serial number. In this particular case, this model here, this one, is from 1958, so it's quite an early one. The LP in LP53 stands for Luftpistol. I understand one word really, which in German means air pistol. Now, I would guess the 53 just relates to the date they started manufacture of these pistols. Um, the pistol was Walther's attempt to copy the form of their famous Olympia target pistol. It really does have quite a striking shape with its very very long barrel and its almost unique way of providing power. It's not obvious from first glance as, as to how this air pistol actually operates. The gun is a brake barrel pistol, spring pistol, and it's the trigger guard here that serves as the cocking link to the piston. The piston is driven by a double concentric spring, one inside the other, which is held within the hand grip or inside the hand grip itself. I would think the double spring is probably to ensure um, the power from a very very short movement that the piston takes uh, in, inside the hand grip because the cylinder obviously is very very short here. The gun is quite difficult to cock actually um, and Walther did provide a wooden cocking aid that fits over the front part of the barrel and aids as a grip. Let's just take a look at that. So, um, I actually didn't get the cocking aid with the gun itself, um, but someone kindly sent one to me that they'd had made up, which actually uh, is made of wood and is actually very, very similar to the one that's provided by Walther. So, the actual cocking aid is... Um, is placed into the barrel here at the end and this enables you to grip the barrel better and you can see the cocking action there so um, if I cock this now there so you can see the arm there the actual uh, trigger guard acting as the lever to push the spring down inside of the grip there and of course you just insert your 177 pellet there and away you go. Um, I will now endeavour to dry fire this. Now I have of course checked this pistol out before starting to ensure there's no pellet in there and we're quite safe to let this off. So uh, because of the very short piston travel, the gun is fairly low powered with a velocity usually around 300 feet per second with a light pellet. The piston travel is actually upward in an upward motion and therefore some recoil is felt as the gun is fired. Walther used to actually advertise the gun as a recoil simulator because of its sharp action. Actually, I've dry fired this and fired this outside and you'll see this shortly. Um, there is a slight amount of recoil from this gun but I, I wouldn't kind of think it's an actual recoil simulator. It's not that sharp. In fact actually it's pretty pretty good. So the famous claim to fame regarding this LP53 is its use in the James Bond posters with Sean Connery. As you can see from this poster, the gun in use is the LP3. 
it's been told that the gun was actually the photographer's own gun and this was used because the Wolfer PPK which is the usual gun that James Bond uses, uses wasn't actually available at the time of the shoot. I think actually the LP53 makes more impact than the PPK would have done. So really the pistol is a 10 metre paper puncher because of the lack of power. And we will go out shortly and test the gun's power and accuracy in my garden. This pistol has, as I said, is from 1958 and is in fact the second variant in all. I understand there are four different variants with some differences within, within these. The first variant, the first, was a smooth finish, had a smooth finish receiver with the barrel and all alloy power parts as a shiny black anodized. The, black, the back of the receiver or the grip frame is curved here. Sometimes this is called the du a duck bill. The second variant, which is actually what this is, had a crinkle finish and you can probably see that on the gun. And if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see it's actually got this crinkle finish on here. And the barrel retained its, um, its, its shiny appearance as well. Um, the second variant um, had the adjustable trigger uh, eliminated from the mechanism. So I guess the first variant had a trigger, uh, trigger adjustment screw of some sort. The third variant uh, retains the crinkle finish um, on the receiver but the barrel is now finished in a dull satin type as opposed to this shiny barrel here. Um, another transition occurring around this time is the rear sight elevation screw. It is now numbered. Um, okay, so I think this one's numbered actually as well. The fourth and final variant of this wonderful Wolfer air pistol. The crinkle finish receiver is retained but it also takes on an ang anglia, angular appearance so the, the duck bill here disappears and you get a more angular appearance at the back here to the gun. Also gone is the chamfer at the front of the frame just below the barrel pivot screw so down here the barrel and the other metal parts retain the dull satin finish. There are in fact actually two types of plastic grip. Um, there's a brown and a black type. It seems the brown grip may be the very early variant. Okay, so let's take the pistol out now first and check it on the chronograph and then we'll take a few shots hand rested at a 10 metre target. In fact actually it's probably more likely to be 10 yards than metres. So here we are outside with the Walther LP53. I'm going to run first of all um, a few shots through the chronograph to see what the actual pistol is doing before we take some shots at a target to see how accurate the gun is. So let's start with the chrono test. So first shot through. Three fifty. Three three nine three three seven
337. Three three eight, so it's stabilised around three forty. That's not too bad. I think I'm happy with that. I'll do some conversions to foot poundage. Um, the pellets I was using for that was the uh, Diablo Match flatheads um, from Air Arms. They are eight point zero two grain. So um, the next test is some accuracy tests at a target so we'll stick something out at um, about 10 yards uh, and see how the gun performs uh, in an accuracy test so now for our accuracy test with the Walther LP53 pistol um, I'm going to take about five or six shots into the target at about 10 meters and we'll see what the results are. So that's six shots into the target at about 10, 10 yards um, and I was rested. So not great, not a great pattern there really. Um, it's, it seems to be grouping down the bottom there. Obviously the sights would need moving. Um, I'm going to try a different pellet now. I'm going to try the Air Arms uh, Field 8.44 um, and see if that makes any difference. So this time I'll be aiming for the orange disc. Um, uh, six more shots with 8.44 air arms filled. Well that seemed to be far better. The grouping at the top, there's a stray one there obviously, but um, the other five shots seem to be um, in about a distance of uh, an inch and a half. That's pretty good. Um, so those pellets obviously suit this pistol much, much better than the flatheads I used originally. Okay, so we've done our testing outside, we've done our chronograph test, um, so the outside chronograph test uh, showed that the gun was performing around about 340 feet per second um, with an 8.02 grain pellet and that's worked out to about 2.2 foot-pounds. That seems to be about the going rate for these guns. Um, 
I don't think there really is a need to change anything on this gun like the spring or anything like that it seems to be around about what I would expect this gun to be doing and I'm quite happy with how this gun's performing so all it remains for me to say is thanks very much for watching and as always please press the like button and subscribe if you wish as there will be more videos coming from me very very soon oh and one last thing um, my book makes a great X Xmas present maybe check this out in the next part of this video thanks for watching and bye for now Well, if you've ever wondered where the name Newtown Naughty Boy comes from, well, you can learn a little bit more about that. Um, I did write a book last year, and uh, quite recently I've had the book republished. Um, it's got a nice new cover on it. It details uh, my story, really, uh, growing up uh, in the UK in a small town, and uh, all the things that I got up to uh, during the 50s, 60s and 70s. There's quite a bit in there, there's some pictures, there's illustrations, there's a little bit of naughtiness, there's quite a bit of air gun shooting and shenanigans. There's stuff that will make you laugh in this book. It's a book you can order from Amazon, but also it's available on Kindle quite cheaply. So why not give it a go? It's a really good read and then you can give me some feedback on it. Um, hope you enjoy. Give it a try.